Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 47 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 46. But I must, must start by asking, were you successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend double chest bump. And if you were not su successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay, what was the homework assignment? Anyway, remember how we made that little tilt meter, that little carpenter's level that would check for level in two different axes. We had the Raspberry Pi Pico W, we had the MPU 1615, 1650, and we had the OLED 1306. And we made this little device that would measure, uh, you know, would act like a level and a little bubble would move around in response to the tilt of the device. Pretty neat little gizmo, huh? But what was the problem that we ran into? What we ran into is, is that our little product would interpret motion as tilt. So if it saw acceleration, it would interpret that acceleration as tilt. And then that could possibly lead to error errors in our application. So let's say we had this thing mounted in our off-road vehicle where we wanted to see what type of incline up and down or left and right our vehicle was at as we're traversing off the road. But what we saw is if it saw an acceleration, it would interpret that acceleration as a tilt and it would throw our measurements off. And so what my homework assignment was for you guys to reduce that noise, to eliminate that vibrational noise, or at least have an approach to try to minimize that vibrational noise in the device that we had developed. Okay. So let's jump in and let me show you my uh, my solution. What I want to do is I want us to start at the same place. Uh, let me get out of your way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. And then what I need you guys to do is I need you guys to use this happy little search icon. And I need you to search on something like measure tilt, measure pitch and roll with the MPU 6050, you will come to this page. This is a schematic of how we've hooked this thing up, the 1306 and the MPU 6050. Today, we're not going to be using the display. We're just going to be using the MPU 6050. Hopefully, if you guys are taking this class, you had this circuit hooked up long ago. And then I simplified the code that we ended up with last week where we're not using the display, but we're just measuring acceleration in the X, acceleration in the Y, and acceleration in the C. And then from that, we are calculating pitch and roll. And then what I want to do is instead of sending that to the display and have a bubble move around, I just want to look in Thonny and I want to see the graph so that we can just watch that graph and see if we can clean up our data a little bit. Sound cool? I hope it does. So let's get this out of your way. Let me go back there. I actually need to get that code and I need to copy it. Then we're going to come over to Thonny and we are going to paste it. When I paste it in Thonny, then we're going to go ahead and run it. And what I need is I need all eyes. I need all eyes. And I'll try to get out of your way as much as I can. I need all eyes right here. 
and then I think I'm going to come over here as well okay and now what you're going to do is watch the data as I actually tilt this thing it'd probably be good for me to come a little bit a little bit further away about like that looks good okay so let's run this thing and see if it runs okay very good and I'll just kind of give it a little bit to set the uh, set the auto scale and so we can see as we are sitting here we can see as we are sitting here we have zero degrees in the pitch and zero degrees in the roll as I bring the nose up what do I see the pitch comes up there I'm at about 45 degrees it's measuring 45 degrees nose down by about 45 degrees that looks good okay I can roll uh, left or I could roll right and so you see this thing is working very good so we can see what our pitch and roll are on the device and so that's kind of what we expect but what is the problem the problem is if you move this thing now notice I'm moving it I'm not tilting it and what do I see this vibration or this shaky shaky business going on is leading to something like a 50 degree error that's like more than 45 degrees that's almost when you're horizontal almost like saying that you're vertical okay and so for many applications we need a stable measurement of tilt even if there's some motion and vibration going on and so that is what we are going to work on today okay but what we have to do is we have to figure out what strategy are we going to take to try to get rid of this motion problem and what we're going to do is as a first try to make this thing better what we're going to do is we're going to put in a low pass filter what is a low pass filter you ask well if you guys have taken some of my earlier classes we've probably gone over this before but for some of you this will be a good review and for others of you it might be the first time that you've seen it but let me uh let me drop an, uh, a coordinate axis here for you let me see if I can drop a coordinate axis here for you and we'll kind of think about this all right so let me make sure I have a suitable color nothing nothing too crazy here on our color for the axis we'll just use the black here and we're gonna we're going to drop an X and Y axis a coordinate axis and now let's kind of imagine what we saw is is that our tilt meter is very accurate in measuring tilt and so as long as I'm still let's say I went from flat and then very quickly I went to 45 degrees so I'm coming here and this is degree uh, this is this is degrees and this is time okay so I'm sitting there flat at zero degrees and then at some time I move up and I go to 45 degrees okay if I do it in a smooth background environment everything is great but if I'm speeding up or slowing down or if I'm going down the road bouncing what is the actual signal going to be it's going to be something like this and then it's going to come up and it's going to be something like this okay that is a noisy signal the whole concept behind a low pass filter is to get the data out and kind of remove the noise is there a signal here yeah down here if I look at it overall I could see that I'm really at zero degrees and then up here overall I could see that I'm really at 45 degrees but the problem is the problem is all of that noise so how do you get rid of that noise you use something called a low pass filter and this conceptually is the low pass filter should I trust if I am sitting here let me drop another coordinate axis on you guys okay let's put another one here uh, okay so I'll add another coordinate axis here as such okay so let's imagine that I am just sitting right here okay I'm sitting right here at zero degrees and then I take a measurement and my next measurement is right here okay what are two possibilities one possibility is I'm legitimately on my way I'm legitimately on my way to 45 degrees 
What is the other possibility? The other possibility is it's just another noise signal that is coming from vibration. So how do I mentally deal with this? Well, what I gotta see is, is that if I look over here, really, I never want to trust a single measurement coming off of the sensor, okay? Because it could just be going up and down and up and down. But if I come and then all of a sudden, many measurements are reflecting that a real change has happened, then I begin to trust the data that I'm getting. And so the whole concept but the whole concept behind a low pass filter is don't automatically trust the new data coming in. What here I would say is, man, I'm at zero. I've been zero a long time. I'm not going to trust this one data point until what? Until I see multiple data points that are showing me that I am, in fact, really moving. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a confidence factor. So what you got to think of is there's two concepts in a low pass filter. Where I've been, where I've been sitting, what I trust versus the new measurement that I don't trust. And so there's this trust factor. How much do I trust the old data that I've gotten comfortable with versus how much do I trust the new data point? Well, what that comes down to is we're going to define something called a confidence factor. Okay, and that confidence factor is how confident am I in a single data point coming from the sensor? And you, you, you know, it's usually kind of for a low pass filter, it's kind of low. And so I'm going to have a confidence of 5% in my sensor, or that would translate into the number 0.05. Well, if I trust the data point from the sensor 0.05, then I am trusting the existing number for the measurement by how much? By 0.95. Okay. So my confidence, my confidence in historical data is 0.95. Now these two have to add up to one. So what I can do is I can have something called the sensor confidence, and that's equal to say 0.05. And then the historical confidence, historical confidence, that would be one minus the sensor confidence, okay? So the key thing is these two numbers have to add to one. Now, I don't know, should I be 90% confident? Should I be 50% confident? Should I be 95% confident, 99% confident? We'll have to play with that number, okay? But this is the way it's actually going to unfold. We're going to have something like a new value, new value, and that's going to be equal to the sensor confidence, the sensor confidence times the measurement plus that historical confidence, which is one minus the sensor confidence times the old vowel. Okay. What was the historical value the last time through? What was the historical value? We're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by one minus the sensor confidence. And then we're going to add to it the measured value times the sensor confidence. Okay, so it's be like 5% confident in the new measurement, 95% confident in that running value that I've been carrying along. Okay, does that make sense? And what it's going to do is it's going to smooth out this data. So when it comes here and it gets this up point, it's not going to trust it. It's going to come up a little bit, but it's going to be held back by this historical value. Oh, look, I got another one up there. What's going to happen over a little bit of time? It's going to come up and it's going to go like that. So I'm going to take that noisy blue signal and I'm going to come and I'm going to get this this 
this smooth red signal. Okay, that's a low pass filter. So let's go in and let's see if we can code that thing up and let's see if it actually works or does something, uh, if it actually works or does something useful. So we're going to come back over here to our code. Okay, we're going to come back over here to our code. And what am I, what am I going to do? Well, we've got the roll initially set to zero, right? Roll set to zero and the pitch set to zero. Okay, but now when I come up with the pitch, instead of saying that it's equal to the measurement and I need to probably come up here and I'm just going to put the I'm just going to put I'll call it confidence val confidence val that's my confidence in the sensor so I'm not going to just just because it says it's 45 degrees I am not going to trust that number I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply it by the confidence val like that OK, I'm going to take that and multiply it by the confidence valve. But then I've got to add to that then the one minus confidence valve like that. And then I'm going to multiply that by whatever the pitch was before, the old value of the pitch, whatever I calculated before. So this is going to be the new value of pitch. I take whatever I had before and I'd give that like 95% weight and I would give the new measurement 5% weight and that way I'm not going to be led astray by all of that up and down noise. Does that make sense? I'm trying to intuitively explain this to you. Leave a comment down below. Does it make sense? Okay. So what are we saying here? The confidence val, let's come back over here. I'm going to say the confidence val, let's say I'm going to confidence val, I'm going to say that I'm going to have a 10% 0.1 confidence in the sensor reading. Okay. And now I want to get this where you can really see it. Ah, and I better do the same thing for roll. And so here roll is going to be <clears throat> confidence val times math plus one minus confident val times roll. Okay. And now let's see what happens. And I want to get this up here where you can really see it good. Okay. I want to get this out of the way like this. And so now let's see if we can measure it. Okay. Okay. There it goes. Yeah, I need to try to show this to you too. I got a lot of stuff I'm trying to show you. Let me get out of your way a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to pitch it and look at that. It's pitching. Okay. It's pitching and it is rolling. And do you see how already you can see that as I'm going up and down, there's not as much noise. Do you see how much clearer that is? Let me make that smaller so you can see the data better. So give me just a second to manage this window a little bit. Just a second. Okay, now you see as I do this, do you see how much smoother those transitions are? And look at that. Look how smooth that is. But now let's see, that's great that it's smooth, but did I take the vibration problem out? Okay, I didn't completely take the vibration problem out, but I sure made it a lot less, right? It's not giving me a 50 degree error signal. It's giving me more like, I'd say that that's probably more like five degrees error that I'm getting there. So let me kill that and let's see. So what if we wanted, what if we wanted to further get rid of that little bit of noise that was left? Well, instead of a confidence value of 10%, what if we made the confidence value 1% like I really don't trust. I really don't trust that one data point, those few data points. So I give it a lower value and I come in. Okay. And now let's shaky, shaky. Let me, let me give it a value so it'll come out. Okay. Let me see if I, I, I want to give it a value where it'll auto scale more reasonably. Like let's go up to like 45 degrees, 50 degrees. Okay. Let me come down to minus 50 degrees and then you'll be able to uh, kind of get a good auto scale there and it'll get there. Okay. So now let's see as I, let me get it all normalized back. Now I'm going to shake it 
And look at that. It's almost like pretty much completely taken out that vibration, right? I'm almost completely taken out that vibration signal. So my low pass filter, if I distrust the new data enough, what? I get rid of the noise. But now what's the problem? If I come in and let's let's say that we roll it to about 45 degrees, <laughs> what's the problem? It's very sluggish, okay? It becomes very sluggish. There's no noise, but I'm so distrustful of the sensor it becomes sluggish, okay? Well, let's see, let's try a different one. Let's say, what if I gave it a 30% confidence, like I'm really confident in that sensor, okay? So let's run it like that with a 30% confidence in the sensor, and let's get it, uh, let's get it where it's auto-scaling well. Okay, now it's auto-scaling well. Now watch this, I go to 45, and what's the good news? It's very snappy. Do you see how snappy it is? It is very quick and responding quickly, but I've given it so much confidence, I'm now getting what? It looks like maybe maybe 10 degrees, maybe 10 degrees of noise, 10 degrees of error as I am shaking the thing around. So what would maybe be a value that I might give it? What if I gave it a 5% confidence? I'm gonna give it a 5% confidence like that, and then I'm gonna come in, and then let's see how responsive it is. Yeah. Oh, I put two. Never mind. It wants one decimal point there. Okay, so I come up. That was pretty responsive. Let's try it. You see, we get a little bit of noise. Ah, it's still kind of sluggish. It's still kind of sluggish. That's a little too sluggish for me, so I think I've got to, I think I've got to go a little bit faster. So I'm going to give it a 10% or 0.1 confidence, and then let's try that. Okay, and that was pretty snappy, right? That is pretty snappy. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the speed, and then here it looks like I'm getting about five degrees. So using a low pass filter, that is about as good as we are going to be able to do. But what I want you to see is a low pass filter is generally very useful for almost any sensor that you use in a system. Why? Because on almost any sensor, there are going to be two different things. There are going to be noise signals and there are going to be real signals, and the low-pass filter helps you take out the noise signal and just look at the real signal. Does it do this without a price? No, and the price that you pay, the price that you pay is it becomes more sluggish, and so you are faced then with a trade-off between how responsive your system is versus how noisy your system is. And it's like you're trying to find that happy medium in the middle to get something that works pretty good. I would say at this point, I would go ahead and say that having a 5% confidence in the new measurement coming from the sensor is a pretty good sort of in-between. It's fairly responsive and it's fairly low noise, and that would be a good kind of balance point, uh, a good point to try to land in to get this thing to work, okay? But you see, I'm, you know, like, are we happy with this? Are we happy with this? And well, no, I, I, I really don't like that noise. And then besides not liking the noise, I don't like that it is a little bit, it's not as snappy as I would like. Okay, so now what we've got to do is we've taken a big step in improving the performance of our little prototype product, we've made a big step forward by putting a low pass filter in, but I'm not happy. I want us to get it where it is both snappy and the noise isn't there. Okay, it's both snappy 
and the noise isn't there. And so I guess probably what your homework assignment is, your homework assignment is to just incorporate a low pass filter like I did and then post your video to YouTube showing your solution and you play around with the parameters for you and you sort of see what you think the best the best parameter is as far as confidence value in the sensor to get the right balance between snappiness and uh, and noise immunity. That'll be your homework. And then next week, we're going to dive deeper in. We're going to dive deeper in. And what do we want? We want something that is snappy and low noise. We don't want to have to face that trade-off. And you guys can even speculate how we might do that. See if you have any ideas of how we might do that. And don't say averaging, man. Man, averaging is just, uh, we don't average. We, you know, low pass filter is what we can do kind of along that vein. But now we have to think outside the box. We got to dig deeper in our tool chest to try to get something that is going to take this to the next level. Okay, guys, I hope we have people floating down the river in inner tubes. What is the world coming to? What is the world coming to? Tourists out there floating down the Nile in inner tubes. Okay, so guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. I hope I'm not making you weary on this component, but I just really love the engineering and the math and the physics behind it, and I like taking it deeper and deeper and deeper in what we can do with the components. So you guys give me feedback. Are you getting weary of this and wanting to move on? Or are you enjoying this kind of deeper dive into the MPU 6050. Also, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. You Patreon guys, you're the ones keeping me in the game right now because YouTube has made it clear that they don't love me very much. And so what keeps me going is that support from the guys on Patreon who are standing next to me. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, you can help me by giving me a thumbs up or you can help me by leaving a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel when you do. Ring that bell so you'll get notifications when future lessons drop. And most importantly, share this video with other people because the world needs more people coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.